weed is legal without being legal. Now, what do I mean? In this video, we're going to talk about THCA. Now, some people are referring to this as, uh, I've seen videos popping up saying, my new favorite cannabinoid, which is just, you know, silly because it's not a new cannabinoid. It's not a synthetic cannabinoid like Delta 10, Delta 11, THCO, and all that stuff. This is the precursor to Delta 9 THC. So when people say THCA, what they're talking about is Delta 9 THCA. Right, so this is the precursor to Delta 9 THC, the cannabinoid that gets you high. And it is sort of the latest loophole in the hemp industry uh, to kind of skirt, you know, the, the, the regulations that make it that you can't sell products that get people high. Now, obviously, we know that's not true. You can walk into any gas station across the country and find hemp products that get you high. Um, and we could go into all those little loopholes, but for this video, we're going to focus on THCA. So what happens with THCA when you heat it up? So what THCA is, is the acid version of Delta 9 THC. So when you decarboxylate it, you heat it up above 200 degrees, that acid molecule is going to break off and it's going to become Delta 9 THC. This is why THCA hemp flower is kind of a joke. There really is no THCA hemp flower. Now, what we should we should first discuss kind of when people say hemp flower what they're actually talking about because it doesn't actually make sense either what they classify as hemp should actually just be classified as uh, high CBD cannabis that's how so so the way they actually describe types of cannabis is you have type one which is high THC cannabis you have type two which is an equal ratio of THC to CBD you have type three which is a high CBD low THC cannabis, and you have type four, which would be, you know, a combination of CBD, CBG, and other, you know, novel cannabinoids. And then you have true industrial hemp. And so the reason we shouldn't be calling, you know, anything with less than 0.3% THC hemp is because it's really not the same plant. Phenotypically, industrial hemp looks nothing like what we grow, which is high CBD or high CBG flower. <clears throat> Structurally, phenotypically, those plants are exactly the same as THC cultivars. You would not be able to tell the difference. Versus a true industrial plant, uh, a true industrial hemp is going to look like a 10 foot tall bamboo plant. You plant it differently, you grow it differently, you harvest it differently. It really is kind of a different plant unto itself. Um, classifying, you know, anything with less than 0.3% THC as hemp doesn't really make sense for that reason. So what we have here is actually type one flower being sold as hemp because it has less than 0.3% THC by dry weight. Now we can go into how this is actually possible. Basically they have found some cultivars that naturally have low Delta nine THC at harvest. Um, so it's going to have perhaps 18 to 25% THCA but will actually have less than 0.3% Delta 9 THC at harvest. Now, after you harvest, the decarboxylation process begins, which is why you have some companies using uh, cryogenic curing, where they're basically pulling the moisture out, sort of with like dry ice, and, uh, and curing it that way. Now, I, I really don't think that's the way to do it. I mean, it will get you uh, perhaps a compliant product, but it's not really going to have the terps that you get from a nice, long, slow, dry cure. Um, <clears throat> however, uh, other people are able to harvest and dry it for maybe five days at cool temperatures, send that off to the lab, it, probably with ice packs if it's the summer, and then you know, if it's the right cultivar, getting a COA that says, hey, look, it's less than 0.3% Delta 9 THC. It's 25% THCA, and all that THCA is going to turn into Delta 9 as soon as you heat it up. But technically, as you guys wrote the law, it's a legal product. So that's kind of how people are skirting uh, this whole thing. And they're calling it hemp flower. Uh, but, and I guess based on the government's definition, it is, but it's really just type one or type two flower. So I guess the real question is, why has it taken so long for this loophole to emerge? I mean, if you go into any dispensary out West where they're selling THC flower, check the label. It's going to say THCA. It probably does have more than 0.3% Delta nine THC, but the majority of that THC is going to be in THCA. So 
You know, it's it, it, this isn't really something new. There have been some genetics that have come out that have low Delta 9 at harvest, but there's also type 1 genetics that would fit in that bill that aren't from CBD or anything like that. So why has this loophole just now suddenly emerged uh, quite recently? I believe it's because everybody, you know, in this industry is always just kind of testing the water. So, you know, 2018, 2019, hemp becomes legal. You've got hemp flour, you know, and, and to be honest, when they wrote the regulations, they didn't think people were going to be smoking hemp. They thought this is going to legalize it so that, you know, farmers can grow it for rope and things like that. I'm pretty sure that's what the legislators had in mind. They didn't think people were going to be smoking it. They didn't think people were going to be making concentrates out of it. And they sure as heck didn't think people were going to then exploit all these little loopholes like Delta 8 and THCO and all these other, you know, novel cannabinoids. Um, but, you know, cat's out of the bag. And the way they wrote the law was... Hemp is defined as any product containing less than 0.3% Delta 9 THC by dry weight. So what we saw in 2020 was kind of the advent of uh, Delta 8 came onto the scene. And, uh, oh, it's it's like legal weed and it's, it's more chill than Delta 9. Um, but the thing is, yeah, they never regulated Delta 8. Nobody was really talking about Delta 8. It wasn't really a thing. So then Delta 8 became a thing. In 2021, we started seeing, you know, uh, other synthetic cannabinoids, which really came into fruition in, in, two, in, 2020, in 2022 with, you know, THCO, HHC, THCP, basically a chemistry uh, experiment of all these different synthetic cannabinoids that are not really found in any quantities in the plant itself. And a lot of them have psychoactive effects. Some are even reported to be stronger than Delta 9. So kind of in the government's attempt to uh, regulate and, and keep people from getting high, they may have just opened up doors for people to get even higher and, and perhaps with products that aren't really, you know, tested or safe. Um, so anyway, with THCA, like this is not new genetics, there's nothing really new that's changed except, you know, people keep dipping their toe in the water. And now we're kind of at the point where, you know, over half the states in this country have, you know, either legalized or have a medical program for, for cannabis. And the majority of the public doesn't really care. They're, they're in favor of it. Um, and, and because of that, you know, you really don't have many people in law enforcement or, uh, you know, in Washington that actually care. Um, it's just not a really, to go against it and try to crack down on this whole industry, it's not really a popular opinion. Uh, law enforcement has way bigger things to deal with. They're dealing with a fentanyl epidemic, we've got methamphetamines, and, and all this stuff is, is way more pressing than cannabis, which, you know, in most places you can go one state over and, and buy it perfectly legal. So law enforcement doesn't seem to really care. And, and legislators, whether they're Republican or Democrat, don't really seem to care because it's just not a popular topic to get behind. Um, the only way I could see this kind of being regulated is if, well, a couple things. One, if we have another, you know, say vaping crisis where, you know, back a few years ago, uh, we, there were products tainted with vitamin E acetate that were actually uh, ruining people's lungs and sending them to the hospital. My fear with a lot of these synthetic cannabinoids and, and all these products I'm seeing in smoke shops across uh, the country is that there's, there's nobody's doing solvent testing. So in order to get these synthetic cannabinoids, it takes a series of acids and solvents to get there. And most of these companies are not providing any COAs, doing any third-party testing. They're putting it in a flashy package and they're selling it super cheap because it's a cheap product to make. And they know most people are going to a gas station or a smoke shop and they're just looking for the cheapest thing that'll get them high. And that's the majority of where things are right now. It's really not ideal. On the flip side of that, you have a city like Chicago which is just taxing people an insane amount. You know, a, a cartridge in Chicago, a live resin cartridge in Chicago might run you 90 to $100 after tax uh, for a one, one gram cartridge, which is just really not feasible for most people. You could drive a couple states over to Michigan and get it for $25. So the market in these states, depending on how heavily they're regulated, really doesn't make sense. And, and meanwhile, somebody could really just order it online and have it delivered to their house. Uh, so that's also a, a hard option to compete with. So to be honest, I could see this loophole staying open for the foreseeable future. And it basically means that weed is legal without being legal. You got a COA. The people growing this are saying, look, here's our COA. We tested it. It came back legal. Now, here's the thing. Once that flower goes out and say it goes to dispensaries and smoke shops all over the country and it sits on a shelf at room temperature and sunlight's coming in, it doesn't take much 
to decarboxylate and get above 0.3%. Now, it's not going to be like in order to get all of that THCA into Delta 9 THC, you're going to have to actually heat it up above 200 degrees. But for it to just slowly decarboxylate, uh, it'll do that at room temperature, especially if there's sunlight involved. And, and to take something that's, you know, 25% THCA and get above 0.3% Delta 9, it doesn't take much decarboxylation for that to happen. So I bet you if you were to walk in and actually buy some THCA flour from your local dispensary, send it off to a lab, chances are it's not going to come back compliant. Like again, I just don't get the feeling that anybody cares. So we might be entering into sort of this golden age of cannabis where it's legal without being legal. Now, at Acura, are we going to grow, uh, you know, THCA flour? I'd love to. I mean, personally, I would think, you know, type two flour, a one to one ratio of THC to CBD is kind of the sweet spot for most people because the CBD really rounds out any rough edges that come along with THC. Um, you know, I'm just kind of following this as we go, but you know, I look around at all of our competitors and everybody's jumping on this. So it's sort of like with the whole Delta eight thing, if you didn't jump on that trend, you missed out on a huge market surge. Now for Delta eight, all we do is the gummies. I tried some Delta eight flour. I wasn't impressed. And, uh, it's just not, I'm not going to sell a product that I don't myself enjoy. Um, and so we didn't really go that route, but you know, I really think in the end, instead of chasing every new novel cannabinoid, it's best just to grow quality flour from quality genetics, and uh, that gives people a well-rounded effect. So anyway, those are my thoughts on this. We're going to be releasing a line of THCA carts very soon, which is basically going to be our live resin, our CBD live resin, mixed in with some THCA diamonds that we're basically pulverizing and homogenizing in that mix so we can cart it up. We're just past the R&D stage right now and everything's looking really good. So we're hoping to have those on the market within the next two or three weeks. And it's gonna basically be, you know, maybe a one-to-one -one, or it might even be a one-to-three, uh, you know, THCA to CBDA. And the effects are really balanced and really nice. There's no anxiety, there's no paranoia. And honestly, that's what I want. I think that's what most people want. And so keep a lookout for those. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. We'll see y'all next time.